Welcome, this is the Queryverse uh, talk. So the topic uh, for today is that I'm first going to give a, a quick definition of uh, what the Queryverse is, and then I'm going to talk about the new features that uh, we've added over the last year. So uh, Queryverse is a family of packages uh, for data sciences um, type work. Uh, it's tightly integrated with each other and the rest of the Julia data stack. And in general, it's stable and ready for production use. Um, I don't break things. Uh, I think I have not broken things in the Queryverse ever since Julia 1.0 shipped. Um, so that, that's a, a, a promise I'm making for these packages. Um, sometimes there are bugs and they break things, but, but that's not on purpose. So here's the typical uh, query uh, uh, code. Um, uh, it really has uh, three parts. Uh, first, you acquire some data. In the middle, you manipulate that data. And then at the end, you save that data out. And I'm going to um, uh, talk about each of these individual pieces uh, next. So for loading, um, you have many uh, options. Here we load a CSV file. But uh, here you see some other options that you could use to start a query. Um, there's a rich file I/O uh, support story in, in Queryware, so we uh, support very many um, uh, file formats out of the box. You can see them here um, under file I/O. You can start with almost any tabular data structure that exists in uh, Julia. We have lots of you know data frames is the big established package, but we have many other packages that also um, store tabular data, and that you can start with any any of those packages. So. Um, uh, query is a package that works with, with a uh, large number of sources. In fact, it works not only with tabular data, it works with anything that's iterable. So you can query a dictionary, you can uh, query an array, uh, all of that should work. In the middle here, uh, we have the data manipulation. Uh, and so in this case here, I'm selecting a couple of columns, I'm uh, uh, mutating a column, then I'm grouping uh, things by uh, two columns, and I'm uh, computing some aggregations. Um, there are two types of syntaxes supported for this middle part of manipulation, the link style and the standalone style. The standalone style is the one that I recommend for people. That's where all the new features uh, are being added lately. Uh, what kind of operations do we have? It's a long list. You can see them here under operators. You can project, filter, group by things, sort things, join things, uh, and so on and so on uh, and so forth. So, so there's a rich uh, uh, story there. Uh, we also, over the last one and a half years or so, added operations that are specific to tables. Um, uh, so uh, you can see the, those commands here with select, mutate, rename, uh, and so on. Um, so they make life a little bit easier if you are querying and manipulating a tabular data source. Uh, and then finally, you can save things out. Uh, 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 here, for example, you can save something into a file, the result of a query. We support uh, many different file formats, but you can also materialize the query result into a table structure. Again, all of these uh, uh, structures should work. Uh, you can plot them. Uh, you can display them in interactive uh, UI front ends. So there's a rich set of technologies uh, where you can uh, consume uh, the output of, of any of your uh, queries. So that gives you sort of a rough overview of what query is. And, and now I just want to uh, briefly talk about some of the new features we've added uh, over the last year. So most of the progress uh, actually has happened on the plotting side of things. Um, and the plotting package in the Queryverse is called Vigalite. Here you see some of the types of plots you can create with that. Um, Vigalite over the last year gained a lot of uh, additional uh, packages that augment it. I have another talk at JuliaCon talking about that ecosystem and I'm uh, recommending that you look at that if you want to uh, get more details. Um, the other uh, uh, new set of features is that we uh, added three new query operators that help you uh, deal with missing values and I'm uh, quickly going to demo those here. Uh, so here I have a data frame um, that has some rows that uh, contain missing values. Uh, and so the first uh, new command that I have here is called drop an A. Uh, and it will just drop any row uh, that has any missing value. Um, so in this case here, the only row that survives is the third row because that's the only row in the original data set that is uh, without missing values. 
Uh, you can also specify um, that you want to restrict this to a specific column. So I can, for example, say only drop uh, rows where there's a missing value in the B column here. Uh, and so that will uh, drop the first row from the original data set, but leave uh, uh, other rows um, that have a missing value in a different column intact. Um, the second uh, new command uh, is called uh, disallow NA. Uh, and if you call that it on a data source that has any missing values, it will throw an error. The error message is horrendous, but um, it, it works, it warns you. So uh, you can also um, uh, disallow an A, uh, scope that again to a particular column. So here we say um, we want to make sure that there's really no missing value in column C. And so that uh, uh, works because column C actually doesn't have any missing values. Um, all right, and then the final uh, new uh, uh, command that we have here is called uh, replace an A replace an A. So this will replace any occurrence of a missing value in the source data set with some new value that you specify. So here I'm going to say replace them all with zeros. Uh, what happens is that uh, uh, the missing values in the original data source are now replaced uh, with zeros here. Uh, again, I can scope this to particular columns. So I can say replace an A, and then I can specify that I only want that to happen in the B column. Uh, and I want uh, in the B column, I want to replace missing values with the value one. Uh, and so now we still have the missing value in the A column here because that was left alone, but we've replaced the missing value in the B column here with this command. So those three commands, uh, uh, drop an A, disallow an A and replace an A should make it easier uh, to work with data sources that contain uh, missing values. Um, and that is really uh, all I have to say here. Uh, I hope you find this uh, family of packages useful. Um, do check out the Vega Lite uh, talk. Uh, and if you uh, want to help out with this effort, um, I'm always looking for collaborators. Um, so please feel free to reach out. Thank you.